Oh, bless you. Man. Shalom, shalom. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? What's going on? What is going on? What is going on? Hey, Sister Michelle, what's going on? What's going on, Facebook? What's going on, YouTube? I uh, hope everybody's doing well. What y'all, how y'all doing? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What is going on? Um, I mean, pretty much, you know, you know, we already see, we already pretty much see what's going on. Um, once again, shalom, everybody, what's going on? What's going on, y'all? I got part two to this. Um, I mean, it was just a few, few weeks ago I did, um, I did a live on Jewish privilege and white privilege as well as Negro privilege. And I told y'all there's a difference between Jewish privilege and regular white folks privilege. Um, y'all know me. I'm a, I'm a very practical uh, brother. I'm a spiritual brother, but I'm also practical. I think we have to keep both of those into in perspective of um, of what's going on in the current state and time in which we live. And I think they're very important to understand. You cannot be too spiritual to the point to where you don't uh, even consider the practical elements of life. And so we already know what's going on um, with the death of the brother that was down in Savannah, but well, not in Savannah, down uh, near uh, Brunswick, in that Brunswick uh, area of Georgia. It's about an hour from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, but first, before I get into that, and I'm not going to be on here long, I'm just going to try to chime in about 15 minutes. Um, I, the, those of you may have seen the part one of the white privilege, uh, Jewish privilege, as well as the Negro privilege. Um, and, you know, most people seem to think that white privilege and Jewish privilege is the same. It's not. Um, white privilege doesn't have the level of perks that the Jewish privilege has. Jewish privilege pretty much is something that you have to be inherited to receive. What I mean is, and I'm not talking, I'm talking from the Ashkenazi perspective or the, uh, maybe even the Sephardic, but mostly uh, the Ashkenazis who uh, who who pretty much um, control, uh, pretty much predominantly run, you know, New York City. And I gave you guys an example of a funeral that was taking place, and they were not practicing social distancing. Um, the police officers of the NYPD was basically uh, sitting in a car, and. They're sitting in the car and all they can do is grab the radio and just talk to them through the radio, through the loudspeaker and telling them that they are not six feet. No type of authority, no type of power. Didn't call back up. Didn't do any of that. I showed y'all clearly as day video that many of you have seen. All of a sudden... Two, three weeks later, there's another funeral with black people, Negroes in New York City. It wasn't no a New York you know, NYPD sitting in no cars and vehicles. They were outside the vehicles laying hands on black folks because they were at a funeral and they were not practicing social distancing. Clearly on video, go watch, go put it up on YouTube. One of the sisters started fighting back and the police officer body slammed her like she was a dude. Pepper spray, body slam, beat up, 
applying pressure, telling them they need to break it up, go home. You're not practicing six feet, no social distancing, none of that. But the Jewish folks was at a funeral. It was about 400 of them not practicing social distancing, which in New York, I showed y'all pretty, pretty much in New York, if you have a funeral, I think up to maybe what, 15 people can, can attend the funeral or something like that. They had about 300 people in New York, 300 Jews in New York. Three hundred of them and all these two black officers could do was sit in the car and pick up the radio. You're not practicing six feet. You're not practicing six feet. They went out the car laying hands on Jewish folks. They weren't separating them. They didn't call back up. They weren't beating them down. They weren't slamming them on the concrete. They weren't doing any of that stuff. Jewish folk. Now, I can't sit here and tell my people to take responsibility, which many of us as black folks, we cannot give a pass that we do do stuff too. We do, we do crazy stuff. Just like going to stand on a line to buy a pair of Jordans, which is foolish. You open up Georgia and all you can do is think about some Jordans. Where are you going? Foolish. I'm not one of these leaders going to sit around here and just dismiss the, the ignorance that we do as black people, as Negroes. I'm not going to do that. But I'm also not one of these leaders that's going to sit around here and act as though these Jewish folks don't have no privileges and that white folks don't have no notice. I separate them. Regular white folks and Jewish folks have two different privileges. And clearly all those Jewish folks at that, at that doggone funeral, nobody put hands on them. Nobody called back up. Nobody threw them in the paddy wagon. They weren't practicing social distancing and they told the police when they was going to be finished. But you have black folks in New York going to a funeral and they're told to break it up, go home, and hands was put on them. Sister got body slammed in the street, literally, WWE style. Now let's deal with this. Black privilege or Negro privilege and white privilege is two totally different things. See, white folks get the benefit of the doubt. A Negro can't even jog through the neighborhood. Let me tell you something. It, it, here's the thing. I forgot the brother name who does this special on TBS. Hey, Pop, how you doing? Who does the special on TBS? What's going on, uh, 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 my, my brother, um, Bishop? Man. What's going on, Bishop Howard? How you doing, big bro? The, the brother on the special that does the ancestry um on TBS on PBS that bring black that, that bring black people and connect them to their African roots. 
This brother is educated. Since those for think that that black folk are we just dumb? We don't know nothing. Oh, let let they think you black Christians are dumb. They think us black Israelites are stupid. Okay, let's just let's just put it out there. Okay, let's be real about the whole thing. They think we stupid as Israelites. We don't have no education. And they think you black Christians are dumb. That's just what it is. Man, let's be perfectly honest about the situation. No sugarcoating it. No matter how many degrees you got, whether it's theological, whether it's business, it doesn't matter what you got, you are still dumb. To some degree. White folk get the benefit of the doubt. The brother who is a Harvard professor locks his keys out of his house. He's trying to get in his house. He lives in a wealthy neighborhood. He's a Harvard graduate. I mean, a Harvard professor. The police roll up on him, slam him on the car, asking him all kinds. The man, the man walks with a cane, but he's, very intel, a very intelligent brother. He gets body slammed on his car, thrown in the back of the car like they're going to take him to jail. And he's at his own house trying to get in. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not done. The doctor from the University of Miami just recently happened about two weeks ago. He's taking money out of his own pockets to make sure that the homeless has masks and gloves and he's doing tests on them to make sure that they don't have COVID-19. He's taking money out of his, he ain't getting money from the state. He's taking money out of his own pocket. So we're spending his own personal time down in Miami. He's loading his stuff up in the front of his house. Luckily he had a camera. He's loading his stuff up in the truck as he always does here comes the police, a white officer rolling up on him. He had a couple of, you know, boxes in the in in the yard. The officer tell him he's loitering. Now he's in front of his house. He's loitering. Or he's, I'm sorry, he's littering or uh, loitering. What, whatever he said he was doing. He handcuffs the doctor. Now he's a brother who's educated. A doctor from the University of Miami, physician, handcuffs the brother, st stops him in the middle of the street, this close to his face, spitting on him as he's talking. Now, we're supposed to be practicing social distancing. He's sp literally in his face, spitting on him as he's talking. He's telling him he's a doctor. He don't get the benefit of the doubt. In his face, still talking, spitting, and everything. Throws him in the car. His wife runs, comes out of the house with his ID that he's a doctor. And now, oh, I'm sorry. No, you ain't sorry. You're not sorry. I'm tired of healing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, that I'm sorry stuff, man. Listen. You're not sorry. You're only sorry you got caught. That's all it is. The, the man is in his house. The man is in his house and the officer walks in and shoots him in his house. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean come on, man. This, I mean, I, I'm just, I, I don't know what, I, I, I don't know what to say, y'all. I'm just trying to figure, the man in his house, he gets gunned down in his house and she says that she thought she was going in her house. I, 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 
mean, come on, man. And then here's the thing what we do. See, I I I wouldn't go, I, I really wouldn't go say nothing about it. I let stuff pass and stuff. I'm the type of friend, it just build up for me. It just build up and build up and build up. Ty I can't take it no more. I'm not, I'm not just the one that fly off the handle. Stuff just build up for me. And then when it built up, that's it. And what do we do? What do we do, y'all? The woman is found guilty and the judge gets, the black judge gets out her chair and go down and hug her like she's the victim. I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all, I can't take it no more, man. This don't make sense. This goes down and hugs her like she's the victim. And they combing her hair. And all the, I, what is this? Dylan Roof goes in the church, blasts black folks, and they take him to McDonald's. I, I, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you, Jewish privilege, white privilege, Negro privilege, Negro privilege, we don't have, we, the only privilege that we have is to be lucky we're alive. That's it. That's our only privilege. That is our only privilege. When the Jewish folks, they can have, they can, they can violate as many laws as they want because their cousin is a judge, their uncle is a prosecutor, all right, they got all the doggone perks in the world. You can't say nothing against them or it's anti-Semitic and all that. They got all the money. All right. They own all the property, all this stuff. And then white privilege is just a little bit lower on the scale. It's just a little bit lower on the scale. They don't have the same privilege as Jewish folks. They don't have the same privileges. And us, we don't have the perks that neither one of them have. Period. Now we got to deal with this situation with the brother. Two months ago. And the only reason why we hearing about it is because a video was uploaded. They rolled up on these white folks and asked them what happened. We just thought he was breaking in. So, you know, we was doing the citizen's arrest. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. You're free to go. You're free to go. You are free to go. He's a victim for jogging. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what do us as black, how many rules and regulations there is. Okay, Trayvon Martin got killed for walking with a hoodie. Okay, he had a hoodie on. So now we got to teach our kids, son, daughter, we got to teach our Negro kids, son, daughter, you can't wear a hoodie no more. You get blasted for telling the police you have a firearm and you have a guns license. The police tell you, could you get it for me? And then when you go to get him the license, you get shot. Now we got to tell folk, I, we got to tell our Negro children and our Negro sons and daughters. If the police, whatever you do, keep your hand on the steering wheel. Even if they tell you to get even if they tell you to get the license for you, you don't move. It's better for you to keep your hand on the steering wheel and have them to body slam you on the concrete. At least you'll be alive. You might have some scrapes on you, but at least you'll be alive. Okay. Let them body slam you and handcuff you and get the license for you. Now we got to tell our kids. Son, you can't jog anymore. Even in your own neighborhood, no matter how many Bentleys I have, no matter what kind of job do I have, no matter if I'm a doctor, a lawyer, it doesn't matter, son. You, we No, hold on. We have to tell our kids, you can't even play outside anymore. You can't even play outside anymore. Because even if you in the park, the police will run up on, will drive up on you and shoot you like they did the young kid 
that was out. The, the little child, basically a child playing in the park. Somebody talking about he got a toy gun or something. The police rolled up on him. Didn't ask him to tell him to put, put it down. He shot him. Shot him. Now we got to tell our kids, you know, son, you can't, you know, you can't pick up the pellet guns in Walmart because if you do, somebody's going to think that's his real gun and they're going to come and shoot you down in Walmart like they did the other brother. He's just standing on the aisle looking at a pellet gun. And all of a sudden the police roll up on him. No questions. You get no privilege. The only privilege you have is that you're alive. That's it. That's it. How many cases do we have to lay down and present and put out there? How many cases? What do, what do you want black folks to do? What do you want Negroes to do? That's all I want. What do you want us to do? What, what is it? We can't, we can't do nothing. We can't even go try to get down. our own house. We gonna get shot. We can't even sit in our own house or we gonna get shot for sitting in our own house playing Madden. If you're playing Madden, you might be accused for breaking in somebody's house in your own house and you're gunned down. What, you, what, what do you want us to do? What, it, it's, I mean, it's nothing you can do. It's nothing you can do. It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. They didn't, they, they didn't go down there and get them. They get, they, the only reason why they're talking about this situation that happened down in Savannah with that brother is because a tape got leaked. The doggone pro, the district attorney, Ben had the tape for over a month and a half knowing that the brother would, didn't do nothing. But because the one who shot him used to work for the doggone state, the one who shot him used to work for the state. They don't want to get him because he used to work for the state. I'm talking about a citizen, a citizen's arrest. Let some of you black folk go out there and try to do a citizen's arrest on some white folks and see what happens. See what happens. Go, 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 go try. Listen, I mean, it, it makes no sense. I don't care. If, I don't care what y'all say, whoever watching this. It don't matter to me. You call me what you want to call me. I don't care. I've been called everything in the book from both sides. Hebrews that Christian. I don't care. It don't matter to me no more. But I'm going to tell you this. No black folks, no Negroes can roll up at the state capitol with AR-15s yelling at politicians and walk away and live and be called good people. And be called good people. And be called good people. Where they, where, where they do that at? Where they do that at? Um, in Michigan, they are militia rolled up with AR-15s at the Capitol yelling at politicians, and they didn't go to jail. They didn't get shot. No guns got pulled on them or nothing. They ain't nothing happening. Now, black folk, we can't do that. We can't even have a, we can't have a fake gun, a toy gun, a pellet gun. We can't have nothing. We can't have anything that resemble a gun. You better not even have a number two pencil, or they going to say they thought it was a doggone gun. It, it makes no sense, y'all. It makes no sense. But this is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. But I'm not going to sit back and just be quiet. I'm not going to sit up here and say, you know, because you know what? Ain't no strings on me. And I ain't saying, every, I, I'm not saying because people are quiet, they got strings on them. But I'm telling you something, it's some folks got strings on them and they ain't going to say nothing. I don't care about the populace. I'm not trying to be popular. I'm not trying to be in the who's who club. But this is a bunch of madness. Because this affect my children. This, this situation affect my children. We, my kids can't even play outside in the yard. Animals get treated more than Negroes. Animals get treated better than Negroes. I, yeah, I said it. When that situation went down up in New York, in New Jersey, 
I heard all doggone day for the, for the last month of folks talking about how wicked Israelites are. And every time somebody black get killed, none of them folks say nothing. They don't do no videos. They ain't, they ain't doing none of that type of stuff. They ain't doing none of that type of stuff. I ain't see one video of the man in Canada, that white man that was in Canada, that was a Christian, okay? Y'all probably ain't hear about it. The white man that was a Christian killed his wife, took his kids to church, came back home and killed them too. But ain't nobody talk about that good white Christian. Now folks can get mad all they want. When no video was done on him, When they no, did nobody open their mouth, which generally that's what we expect anyway. Which generally what we expect anyway. It don't make no sense. Don't make any sense at all. Now, all I'm telling you is, it's sad, but I mean, you really got to do what everybody else is doing. You really got to do like white folks do. Now, I got to jog with my gun. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just telling you, well, now I got to jog with my gun. I never thought that if I take a walk or stroll through my neighborhood, that I got to walk through my neighborhood where I pay association fees and taxes and everything else. I got to walk through my neighborhood with a gun just to go jogging, just to go walking with my, taking my, my wife or my kids on the stroll. And it makes no sense. I can't take my kids to Chuck E. Cheese what I have in my gun. This makes no sense. It makes no sense. Never would you thought I mean, the days are over. I mean, black folk, we, we got to call the police and wait for the police. They ain't got to call the police. They can just say, hey, this black man was, hey, I, I, I was fearful for my life. Okay. 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 Well, have a good day, sir. Then we write up a report. Well, according to the according according the person, the perpetrator, and we perpetrators, the man was jogging, minding his business. They were waiting for him at the end of the road. He runs a, around the truck. He don't know what's going on. He goes around the truck, gets to the front, and somebody with a gun. What what you expect me to do? What you expect him to do? What do you expect him to do? He's minding his business, jogging. He gets to the corner. He gets down to the end of the road. And somebody is sitting there with a truck telling him to stop or whatever they're telling him. He gets around the doggone truck and you got a gun. What, what, what is the man supposed to do? What is he supposed to do? But try to defend himself. And he ain't got no gun. What is he supposed to do? What is he supposed to do? I'm pretty sure him and his son probably Sunday was in church after they gunned him down. After they gunned this young kid down for running, Sunday they probably went to church like it wasn't nothing. Uh, 
until the tape popped up. Until the tape popped up. Now all of a sudden you got the district attorney talking about, oh, well, we're going to put this into the hands of a grand jury. If that was a Negro, you would have been arrested and had to prove your innocence. You would have been arrested right then and had to prove your innocence. Straight up. You've been arrested right then. Had to prove your innocence. <laughs> Instead, they got the benefit of the doubt. They were already viewed as innocent from the time the call came in. From the time the call came in, already viewed as innocent. Police get there, already viewed as innocent. A grand jury? No one right now that they're social distancing, knowing right now that the governments are shut down, that the government is shut down. Parts of the governments are shut down. Ain't there? There, there is no uh, grand jury selection right now. You working with the system too, because that's because you already know that he, this guy, used to work for. Shalom, Maury Bar Byron. This mother already know. Already know that this joker used to work for the district or for the state. That's why the that's why the, the first two district attorneys resigned for conflict of interest. Because they already know this guy. Because he used to work for the state. So he automatically gets looked out for because he's a part of the club. Let alone. He has white privilege. You can only make a citizen's arrest in the state of Georgia if the person is actively doing something. If he was actively doing something, he wasn't doing anything but jogging. Minding his business. I'm done with it, y'all. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear nobody bringing up no excuses about and always love to throw up. Yeah, but but what about black people? What about black people? How black people this and black people that? What about black people? I don't want to hear that type of stuff. I don't want to hear that type of stuff when y'all already got a head start. Y'all already got a head start. Y'all already got a head start. Close the door. Y'all already got a head start. No, go sit down. Go sit down. I'll be out there. Y'all already got a head start. Before we started doing foolishness. And then the question has to remain. Who embedded some of this foolishness in us? And why we view each other the way we view each other as Negroes? Hmm? Since we want to always talk about black people and black on black, black people do more stuff to each other. Yeah, that's true. But y'all had a head start of doing stuff to us. And then y'all embedded in us a, a, a certain type of psychology. Let's not forget where that came from. Let's not forget the white, the lights, the lighter African or the lighter Israelite or the lighter Negro being put against the dark one. Let's not forget about that and how the psychology lines up. And the reason why you have you, you reason why you have another brother who's successful. Oftentimes get to the point where he think he's better than someone else who's not as successful to him and also has more respect for someone that is that is white more so than he have his own brother. These are facts. Now y'all talk about all the other stuff y'all want. 
when they when they come down to talk about truth, everybody want to get quiet about historical truth. We supposed to forget about it. No, forget about that. That was in the past. That was in the past. But every year we got to remember 9-11. Every year we got to remember the Holocaust. But that was in the past. That, you know, that Jim Crow and slavery, that was in the past. Y'all got to get over that. Every year we reminded of Pearl Harbor. It's only we got to get over because we don't have no privileges. The only privilege we have is to be thankful you're alive, Negro, and you ain't dead.